and now it's like a rock like it's solid like I don't know <laughs> trying not to stress out about it too much but that's good because I didn't really want to wait a week to find out why my left ovary was more tender than my right. I just needed some time to like process everything before I just jumped straight back on the camera and like talked about it with you guys. I don't know, I just like couldn't stop smiling and it was just a bit messed up. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help you out. So I did want to start by sharing with you my breakfast that I've been making for couple weeks now but I actually have to go and get an ultrasound because last week um, my doctor decided that we should test me for PCOS um, and considering that every other woman basically on my mum's side in my family has had cysts on their ovaries of some sort I'm not surprised I obviously hope that I don't have it um, and I've been really lucky with my health and I haven't really had anything go wrong. I've never broken a bone or anything, which is probably more reason for this to be the case is that like, surely I need to have something. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if I did have PCOS, um, but I just want to stay positive. And I mean, the signs that I'm experiencing, um, I did tell you guys in my last couple of videos, but yeah, and then also when I had my last blood test, that was back in August, so it was a while ago, my DHEAS levels were high. Also, I'm moving to Brisbane and it's taken me over a month to find a, a rental. So we found one on Friday and my face has gotten significantly better just over the weekend, which is crazy. Like stress has so much to play in acne, so. Yes, but anyway, um, I need to now call up the ultrasound place because I'm getting an ultrasound. Oh, that's also another one of the symptoms is that um, I explain this all on my Insta stories, but just to fill you guys in on YouTube if you're not following me on Instagram, basically my lymph node is um, has been like swollen for over a month now, and now it's like a rock, like it's solid, like, I don't know. I'm trying not to stress out about it too much but the doctor said that I shouldn't be worried about this um he just said that it's a result of my acne um so yeah let me know in the comments below whether you guys have like um swollen lymph nodes from your acne I didn't I've never really heard of people with acne having swollen lymph nodes as well. I've always kind of thought of the lymph nodes as like saying that you're getting a cold or you're sick. Um, and obviously it can also be connected with your other organs if something's not right there. Um, but I didn't really think of them as just being like the result of having acne because I didn't have them into that. I didn't have it in 2019, which is when I was really struggling with the acne, or at least I didn't notice it. So I don't know, but yeah, let me know if you guys have acne and you have swollen lymph nodes because I'm really interested to see if it's connected for anybody else or whether there is something more going on. Oh, 7.59 um, and they open at eight. So I'm gonna call them and just ask them if I can do a walk-in appointment. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Hi Jackie, I was just wondering if you guys do walk-ins or if I needed to make an appointment for an ultrasound. So I'm going to go and get, here's my referral form here. Um, going to go get my ultrasound. Um, yeah, they want to do my lymph nodes today and my abdomen tomorrow morning. Um, it's annoying they can't do them both on the same day, but that's all right. You can only do what you can do. So I'm going to go get that done. Um, I've never had an ultrasound before, so I'm actually excited. I don't know if that's weird. Um, not so much for this one because like, I don't know, it's on my neck, but, um, I'm like really, I love babies, like really love babies. I'm just waiting for my sister to like hurry up and get married and get pregnant and then I can be like the best auntie ever. Um, so I don't know, I feel like the abdomen one is kind of gonna feel like a pregnancy ultrasound, um, which is a bit funny, but yeah, I've never had an ultrasound before, so I'm a little bit excited. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna take you along. I feel like that would be weird and also I don't know the rules against that, but um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Oh. Whew, it is hot. Let's get this. <laughs> All right, so can confirm that that was like lying there and just letting a dog lick you. like. The gel just felt so weird on my face and like the way that she was doing it, it was just like 
like a dog was just lying there licking you and you just had to like let it. Um, so tomorrow I have my um, abdomen one, but they think they might actually change that for um, a pelvis one. Um, because the abdomen, which we all knew, um, that the abdomen doesn't really show for PCOS, um, or very rarely shows the cysts. So the pelvic one is what you really want to do if you actually want to try and see anything. Um, but I have been informed that even if they don't find cysts to so still keep looking into it, um, because that doesn't mean that you don't have PCOS. So, um, that's the plan. I'm going to keep looking into it. Like don't stress, but, um, yeah, we're just, I'm just waiting to hear back on whether I need to fast for the abdomen one or for the pelvis one, you actually need a full bladder. So you need to like drink lots of water. Um, so either way, I think we're doing it at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, but yes, yeah, so now I've just had all my makeup licked off, um, but I need to go into the supermarket to grab a few things. Um, and yeah. So I went for my ultrasound to test for PCOS um, earlier in the week. So it's Thursday today, the day that I'm recording this. And I went for, I had to get my lymph node um, ultrasound on Monday and my pelvic one on Tuesday. Um, and so, yeah, I've got my doctor's appointment this afternoon. The scans and results went in really quickly, like they were in the afternoon of the morning that I got the scan. So that's kind of a little worrying. I don't know if it should be worrying, but I'm trying to like just keep my cool until I know. Like I'm I'm pretty good at not worrying about things until there's something to worry about. So I have in the back of my mind that that could be a sign that something's not right, but I don't actually know for sure. And there's like, I already have enough anxiety as it is. I don't need to have that worry and stress on my plate until I actually find out the news. So I guess I'm pretty good in that regard and that I don't kind of worry until I know for sure that there's something to worry about um but yeah obviously it's in the back of my mind and also when they did the ultrasound um the pelvic one like it's an internal and when she kind of moved the probe so that it was facing my left ovary and she like pushes down on it it actually like it's hard to remember whether it was like actually painful like or whether I was like preempting the pain of like if she were to keep going and like push on it further. So I just know that it was uncomfortable compared to my right where I like didn't find feel anything at all. But also like she was right handed so it might just be the angle of the probe as well. Like maybe um, she was in a little bit further for when she was facing it towards the left one which is what it felt like. Um, but I don't know. I'm trying not to worry until this afternoon. So yeah, mum's gonna come with me on that one because if some like if there is news, she doesn't want me to like find out by myself. Although I think I'll be fine. Um, it doesn't really change anything. It doesn't change the fact that I have acne prone skin. Um, it doesn't change the fact that I already know on my blood test my DHEAS levels were high, um, and that my sebum production is has increased and body hair, yeah, all that stuff it doesn't change that. So it just kind of gives me now a direction on what to fix. So I kind of see it as a good thing at the moment, but that might change when I actually get like a diagnosis or something, but yes. All right, so I've just had a quick change of clothes. So we are off to the doctor's appointment now. So wish me luck. Okay, so we came back from the doctor a couple of hours ago and I just needed some time to like process everything before I just jumped straight back on the camera and like talked about it with you guys. But long story short, I have been diagnosed with PCOS. Um, and I mean, I suspected it already because like all the women on my mum's side have cysts on their ovaries, but nothing kind of prepares you for a diagnosis like I really thought that I would be okay because I kind of already knew it but yeah I don't know just like being officially diagnosed with something it like I don't know it hit me pretty hard and I assume that like it hits other people quite hard as well um so yeah I mean that's that now 
Um, and I, I've been pretty lucky with my health, so I've never like broken a bone. I've never been diagnosed with anything. I've just, I've been really fortunate. So, um, I guess, yeah, it just came as a bit of a shock, um, because I don't know, I guess I was getting a bit cocky and, um, feeling like my health was really good. Um, but you know, it's genetic and I understand that and like I was bound to get it. So it's all good, but yeah, so my doctor first he checked my lymph nodes and he felt them and he said that he wasn't worried about them and that the scan came back all good. Um, and when he said that, I thought he meant both scans. And so I was like, really? Like the, the pelvis scan came back as well. And he was like, oh no, we'll talk about that one in a second. Um, so he wasn't worried about my lymph nodes. Um, but then he said um, with the pelvis scan, he was like, oh, to be... Um, like officially diagnosed with PCOS, you need to have a couple of symptoms. And one of them, like one of the things that you can have to um, be considered as someone with PCOS is like, I think it was like 20 or more cysts on your ovaries, like around the twenties. Um, and I was like, whoa, that's so many. Like I thought PCOS was like five cysts on your ovaries or something. Um, and I didn't know that they had to be at one time. Um, I just thought it was like, you know, a cyst here and there. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that he was like, okay, well, like, these are the things that um, would qualify you to get diagnosed with PCOS. And so I was like, okay, yeah, cool. And then he was like, okay, so that your test results came back and um, you had 43 cysts. And I was like, huh, what? And I, was, I thought he was joking. Like, I was, like, serious, because, and he kind of had, like, this little smirk. It's just kind of the relationship that we have with our doctor. Mum came as well, um, which I'm really thankful for, but it's just kind of, like, the relationship we have with him, because I'd reacted at, like, what, you need 20 cysts at one time in order, to, like, for it to be PCOS. Um, or that's at least one of the criteria anyway. Um, and then he said that I had 20 cysts, and I thought that he was, like, just playing with me, but then he was, like, no, I'm serious. Um, and I don't know why I reacted like this. And like when I took him serious and believed him, I just started smiling. Like I was not happy, but I just <laughs> was like smiling. And I think it was like disbelief because I, I don't know. Like, it's just like when they say like, no, you have 20 cysts on your ovaries. It's just like, holy shit. That's a lot. Um, and so I, I don't know, I just like couldn't stop smiling and it was just a bit messed up. Um, and I think mum thinks that I was smiling because like I knew, like I had an inkling that it, I had PCOS and so like because of the acne and the high testosterone and all that kind of thing. So she thought that like she thinks I was smiling because I was like correct and I could have been. Um, I just think that I was in shock and like me and my sister in particular, when we get in trouble, we like laugh. I don't know if you guys are like that. Let me know down in the comments if it's just us. But like if we're getting in trouble or if there's like an awkward situation, we'll just like smile or laugh. Um, and that kind of like if we're getting in trouble, like when we were kids, that would like piss mum and dad off because we like couldn't control it. Um, but yeah, so that that was my reaction to being diagnosed with PCOS. Um, and then the conversation changed really quickly um, and like he was talking about fertility and like I asked okay well like shit when do I actually need to think about like getting my eggs frozen or like like what happens from here because I'm 25 um, and it just like I don't know like I suspected that I had PCOS because of my symptoms but I didn't suspect to like be thrown straight into like the freezing my eggs and I'm getting older and like just the fertility conversation I thought was like reserved for my sister because she wants to fall pregnant in like the next year or two um I just I haven't even thought about fertility I don't have a partner um I've just started like my business and like obviously I want kids um but I just I don't have a partner and I'm doing me at the moment um and like that's so fine and I do really enjoy throwing myself into my business but yeah, I just, to be told that like I'm going to have difficulty having kids, I didn't 
really think that I would like me of all people because I've been so lucky with my health I just didn't think that of all people I would have fertility issues even though I know that so many people do because I've just I've never had any issues with my health um but now this was like a serious conversation I don't want to cry but I have like teared up a little bit this afternoon as you can imagine um but like now this is a conversation that I need to be part of and I need to actually think about what I would do for me um and it's like really confronting I feel I feel like an adult like I feel so much like an adult when you start talking about your eggs and fertility like <sighs> but so I think like we're not gonna worry about like freezing eggs or anything at least until I'm 30 so I've still got like five more years um and yeah I'm not I'm not gonna stress about it but at least now it gives me like another piece of the puzzle to work out like why I've got acne and why I'm breaking out and why my testosterone's high so um my doctor obviously said that like with PCOS you have a greater chance of developing diabetes and um becoming obese as well so like gaining weight um and you also have like you have to watch your cholesterol and there's just like so many factors you have to watch like your blood pressure and your blood sugar and yeah just crazy things because you are more at risk of like anything to do with the heart so like heart disease and stroke um and then I rushed straight home and I um, went onto my like university textbook library and um, this is like my favorite tech. This is from one of my favorite textbooks. Um, yeah, printed off the um, infertility female chapter um, all about like PCOS and stuff. Um, and then this is another one of my textbooks as well. Um, so I printed those off and I'm going to have a bit of a read on them, but they are the textbook's actually called the textbook of natural medicine it's really good they've got chapters on like acne as well um and so it talks about like different herbs and um like supplements that you should be taking as well um for different like conditions and whatnot um and what like a naturopath would recommend that one that you saw that i've highlighted that's like the naturopath's route to um like addressing the conditions each like chapter has one of them for the different conditions but yeah so i printed those off and had a bit of a read my doctor was asking me about like my diet and i eat really healthy i do want to improve that i can definitely improve my diet but um for the majority i already eat healthy and then he was like oh we haven't talked about physical exercise like are you doing any physical exercise do we need to worry about that and i was like no like my physical exercise is probably even better than my diet so we don't have to worry about that so he said that i shouldn't worry like because i am such like a healthy fit person i shouldn't really have any issues but that i just have to make sure that i keep up with that healthy lifestyle and just try and be the healthiest version i can um, of myself and that I shouldn't really have any issues um, but I am still going to see the naturopath that I've been trying to get into and still probably get a hormone test um, and see where we go from here at least now when I do have that initial consultation with her I've got more pieces of the puzzle to tell her straight up so it's like when we're doing less guess and check work at the start because I've already had the ultrasound we've already seen you can have a look at the pictures <laughs> Um, we've already seen the cysts on my ovaries and stuff. I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well on camera, but we'll try. So yeah, um, you can kind of see like cysts, like little dots. I don't know. It's really hard to read. But anyway, the report actually says that I have 43 cysts in total. 43 like what the hell um so i have 20 follicles on my right ovary and 23 follicles on my left ovary so i do have slightly more on my left and it did hurt more on the left side when i was getting the ultrasound um but my largest follicle on my right ovary is 9.6 millimeters like that is almost a centimeter that's like that big that and I have 20 follicles. I don't know. I hope that they're not all around that size because that is crazy big. Um, and then my largest follicle on my left ovary is 9.2 millimeters, which is, again, almost a centimeter. So 
I mean, I love nerding out over this data and these results and these pictures, but like obviously it's not good information. Um, so that is my life. Um, but I keep saying, and I pretty much said this, like when I jumped in the car straight after the doctors, I turned to mum and I said, you know what, this is actually a really good thing for my followers and my subscribers because now that I have PCOS, I'm going to research the shit out of PCOS. And so I'm going to have so much knowledge to pass on to you guys. Whereas like, obviously I still wanted to educate myself on PCOS, but because I didn't relate to it personally, it wasn't like a priority. Um, and yeah, so whereas like now, just you wait. I am going to have so much information to pass on to you guys um, after I do all my research and after I see my naturopath and after I just go through everyday life trying to work with the diagnosis that I've been given. I just, I really, really want kids in the future. So as long as that's going to be all good. And I think like all of the women in my family, like my mum, my auntie and my nan, have all had cysts like they've all had kids so it, I'm sure it'll be fine um but like that's that's the only down of that and like um diabetes and like obesity and obviously like all your heart conditions and stuff but like if I just maintain a healthy lifestyle maintain my diet maintain my exercise um then I should be all sweet but my priority now is still my skin and my testosterone levels I have a licorice tea in the background so I am like um, getting back into it and really hitting hard those um, testosterone lowering tips that I put in this video here but yeah so that is my day <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed following my day um, and yeah I'm sorry to put a dampener on the end of this vlog but I do want to be really open and honest and share my life with you guys and this medical stuff like I don't really care about keeping it private because I know that anything that I find that helps me um, or just anything that I'm going through, some of you will be able to relate to it and the information will help you too. So that's all I want to do is I just want to learn as much as possible and then pass it on to everybody else so that you guys can um, learn from my experiences and hopefully it helps your life too. So yeah, that's all from me for today. If you enjoyed this video, then please make sure to like below and comment if you did enjoy this style and if you want more of them, what you want to see on my channel. Um, I love reading your comments and I am always super open to the feedback and any ideas that you guys might have for videos. But that is all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video next week. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help you out.